in five games to the Mavs, any moves that we can look in the offseason to the Minnesota Timberwolves making? The Timberwolves want to keep their core. They've got six players right now. Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, Jaden McDaniels, Mike Conley, <coughs> Nasri. That's six players. They've got them under contract for almost $182 million. The luxury tax is $172 million. So unless they're trading one of those guys, they're going into next season for the first time under Glenn Taylor's ownership paying the luxury tax. And Glenn Taylor, we know about that, that ownership battle right now. There's a war going on behind the scenes. Glenn Taylor against Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie. I'm told that they're going to figure out a date for their official arbitration to figure out the future owner uh, of the Timberwolves. Uh, it'll be sometime this week. They'll find the date. I expect that arbitration date to be sometime in August or September where they're going to work to decide who the, who the actual owner is going to be moving forward. But the other big thing is Tim Connolly has an opt-out in his contract. He has, he has some days here to make a decision on his option. The expectation around the league, I'm told, is that Tim Connolly will end up in a restructured deal, a renegotiated deal. Glenn Taylor, whether it's Glenn Taylor or Alex Rodriguez, Mark Lloyd, they understand his market value has gone up. He helped architect those, the team that won it in Denver. Then this team in Minnesota becomes a, a championship contender. And his deal is at $8 million per season. You look around the league at all the top tier general managers, executives that are leading franchises, that's now between 10 to $15 million dollars. Uh, per season for those lead executives. Just like the coaching contracts, GM contracts all going up as well. Um, so I would expect Tim Connolly, I think everyone around the league expects Tim Connolly to get a new deal in Minnesota. And then you look around for this Timberwolves roster. You have to give a lot of credit to Alex Rodriguez, Mark Laurie. Some stats for you guys. They so sold out all 41 regular season games this season. First time ever in Target City, uh, Target Center history since 1990. Their season tickets, they would go from 3,000 season tickets to 11,000 season ticket sales. And then their local TV ratings up 150% over the last two years. So this Timberwolves team, Anthony Edwards, they're clearly on the rise. I don't think they have roster decisions left, but there's a lot behind the scenes that they got to figure out. Yeah, I've never seen such a solid team in such a good situation have so many issues that aren't team related, like aren't player personnel related. The drama. They have to figure out the ownership, then they have to figure out the GM, but the team is in great shape. You right. have an absolute star in Anthony Edwards. The two bigs with Talons and Gobert have proven this year that it works. You have pieces like Kyle Anderson, Jay McDaniels, Mike Conley, he's getting a year older. I'd like to see them kind of get a younger point guard, but give them one more score, one more shooter, kind of a Malik Monk type. They're right there. And the way they play, the way they defend, and the way they're versatile on offense, they are going to be right there for years to come, too, because they're young. They're on the rise. They have a versatile team that can win games even when they don't shoot the ball well. But give them a bucket or two off the bench. I was about to I say, love them. we can simplify this thing. They have their starting five and their six man locked up. Yeah. So now you fill up, you fill that roster with guys that want to do their dirty work. Guys that you can get you a couple of three and D guys. Somebody that's going to, yeah, somebody that's going to take some pride in playing defense. Somebody that's going to be able to space that floor for you. But Listen, they're in a great shape, just as, just as good as any other team. To know that your starting five is coming back, your sixth man of the year is coming back, you only got about four or five spots. You got to go find their... their uh, and you have no money, so and you got to be smart. And, and, but <laughs> when, you got to figure smart. it out. <laughs> but when you have a team like this where their infrastructure of the team is so set and they're the number one defense, whoever they get has to fit in. Like, you're not going to be the guy that comes in here and ruffles. You're like, you are going to play <laughs> your role. You are going to know your role. You are going to blend in with this core that they already have because they just had huge success. They have a great coach in Chris Finch. His patella is going to be healed next year. He won't, be be he won't be behind the bench. <laughs> so I think they are in fantastic shape. They just got to figure out the, the Tim Connolly A Rod situation because that's that's crazy. The sale, but I, I love it. But for also, me, it doesn't it's affect. Like, if you're no, on the team, do you, do you give a so fuck can about it? Educate me because. He was willing to sell the team, and right. then what? They got really good, and he said, ah, you I know think, what? I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Shams, <laughs> but the value that he agreed to sell originally was lower than what the value of the team. Basically, he wanted to sell his house, and he accepted a low bid, and, and now he's he, like, wait he a minute, it's it worth a, a lot more than that. Yeah, he came in low. Right? Kind of? Yeah, 2021, he decided and you know chose them, <laughs> Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie, to sell to them for $1.5 billion. Well, in the I mean, one to two years since, that valuation has gone up all the way to $3 billion. So this is a $1.5 billion battle that's going on uh, between Alex Rodriguez and Mark Glory and Glenn Taylor. And Glenn Taylor felt in his mind that deadlines were missed, mm -hmm. there weren't uh, di you know, different action points that needed to be hit by Mark Glory and Alex Rodriguez. They were not done. 
But Alex Rodriguez and Mark Lurie on the other side, and, and they're saying there was a deadline that we had to make, one final deadline. We made all the other deadlines to get 40% of the team. There was one more deadline for us to get the next 40%, to get 80% ownership of the team uh, I, several months ago here. And we met that deadline, but Glenn Taylor saying they didn't meet the deadline. He felt like all the money needed to be in by the end of March. They said all we needed was the paperwork to be in by, by late March. So that's where the issue is at. That's where the strife is at. That's where the, uh, that's where the struggle now that we're seeing. It's really an ownership war over $1.5 billion. Glenn Taylor does not want to let go of the team mm -hmm. uh, and, and doesn't want to miss out on that extra $1.5 billion, Think essentially. About, and that's a lot listen, team. the team getting good, I think Glenn Taylor does take pride in that. He loves being a part of this situation that in a lot of ways, people on the league believe Alex Rodriguez and Mark Lurie are the reason or part of the reason why this team has finally turned it around. Like if you're Glenn Taylor and you could, you smoked one and a half billion and your team is good and your city and your games yeah. are now sold out every single time. It's like, damn, Probably Charms, I, what about Dallas? Like they just, does that, is this just the worst time ever for Mark to sell? Cause they sell, then all of a sudden, boom, they, they go to the NBA finals. Like is something similar, like is that gonna spike their valuation up crazy high? Everyone should sell. I mean, I saw I saw Mark at Game Five. I don't think he's he's upset about. Uh, his <laughs> yeah, sale. I think he's I think, doing just I fine. Think, it's fine. I think he's happy about the fact that he got two to three billion dollars pocketed, and he still has twenty percent of the team. Uh, that they'll have the option, uh, the Adelson family, Patrick Dumont, they're gonna have the ability to buy that out as well at some point over the coming years. So we'll see what happens there. But at the end of the day, you know, Mark ending up with three point five billion dollars and still having. Clearly the vision of having a casino, having a new arena, like that was something Mark's been talking about for, for years now and, and partnering with them for it, you would assume he has some hand in that as well. Sure is interesting that the two teams in the it's finals are crazy. two teams that just sold or trying to, sell to sell. You have to sell your team next year. Yeah, you got you to offer them up to get good. Yeah, I guess that's the sacrifice you have to make. And by the way, he still has his court side seat. He's still living. He is still living. Uh, Shams, appreciate you. Thank you so much. We'll see you bright and early in the morning. We will take a quick break.